إلى الله مرجعكم إلى الله مرجعكم وهو على كل شيء قدير. To Allah is your return, and He is most capable of everything. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, I actually found this picture just as a meme on the internet, but after taking a deeper look, I realized this would actually make a good video. It is a quick test that, if followed honestly, gives you actually a pretty accurate description of which religion you should follow. The studies of religion are of course vast, you could never summarize a religion truly in one YouTube video. However, the basic fundaments of a religion are easily summarized. For example, if you're a Christian, you need to believe in Jesus Christ dying for your sins. If you're a Muslim, you believe that there is no God worthy of worship but one God. If you're a Buddhist, you don't really believe in God, you believe that that the universe unfolds and that everything happens in the moment. So therefore today's video won't be a deep dive into every single religion, it will be just a basic outline that discusses the fundament of the religion, which after all, in my opinion, is the most important thing. Guys, before we start the video, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. All right, let's get started. What religion are you? We start with the question, the main question, of course, how many gods do you believe in? In. If your answer is right off the bat none, the second question becomes, do you believe in any kind of spirituality? If you answer this with no, you end up being an atheist. As Bertrand Russell said, I believe that when I die I shall rot and nothing of my ego shall remain. So you see how this game works. Now within atheism, of course, you have differentiations between different atheists. Some take a more naturalistic approach, other a more hardcore materialist approach. But ultimately, the real baseline question is, do you believe in God? The answer is no, and you're not spiritual. Therefore, you subscribe to an atheistic worldview, a materialistic, most of the time Darwinistic worldview. Now, however, if you answer, do you believe in any kind of spirituality with yes, then the follow-up question becomes, should you deny yourself pleasures? So essentially, this is the question, do you believe there are objective morals in disguise? Because if you believe there are no objective morals, there's only subjective morality anyways, and you consider yourself spiritual, then nothing stops you from doing whatever feels good. Nothing stops you from doing whatever you want to do ultimately. Therefore, if you answer this question with no, you end up in the section spiritual but not religious. Welcome. We're gathered here today because we are spiritual, but not like religious. This is what most people are nowadays. This is what most people identify themselves with. This is something that you find within the so-called New Age movement as well. Spiritual people that follow their desires. I live in Thailand. I can definitely tell you a story or two about that. If you visit certain islands, such as the island Koh Phangan here, you will see many spiritual but not religious types, and they're following nothing but their whims and desires. Oftentimes, they end up in cultish environments where they participate in orgies. Nowadays they call them play parties. Anything goes, everything is love, we're all spiritual, let's get together, let's unify, let's share the love. Most of the time this movement truly ends up in a sex cult. But now if you answer, should you deny yourself pleasures with yes, then you ultimately become a Buddhist. Because in Buddhism, as we said, there is no God. You do not worship a God. The worship of God is absolutely lacking within the Buddhist worldview. You subscribe to that everything is the universe ultimately. However, you subscribe to as well that this universe has implicit intrinsic morals and therefore you deny yourself pleasures. So Buddhism is not moral relativism, don't get that twisted. However, Buddhism lacks a god. And it's quite fascinating because, as I said, I live in Thailand. You still see people worship something higher. They're prostrating in front of the Buddha, for example, or they're offering foods, drinks to their ancestor spirits. So therefore, I make the argument, as a Muslim, of course, that due to the fitra, we have this innate predisposition that we want to submit ourselves to something greater. 
i.e. God, Allah. However, within Buddhism, you don't have that concept of a supreme creator, and therefore they are still worshipping something, something higher than themselves. However, God is lacking within that worldview, and this is why I personally can never be a Buddhist. But let's head back to the original question, how many gods do you believe in? If you answer with many, and this is most likely the minority of people nowadays, most people don't believe in God at all, and therefore they wouldn't believe in multiple gods gods either. Anyways, if you believe in many, the first question becomes, do you believe in reincarnation? If you stop right there and you say, nope, I don't believe in reincarnation, then you end up in the pagan camp. Back in the day, nobody would have labeled themselves as a pagan. This is a term that has been coined by the Christians that then dominated Europe. However, paganism is essentially a more nature-centric religion, if you will, most of the time, but not exclusively. They believe in many deities. They believe in natural deities that you can find in the forests, in the seas. Sometimes they do believe that there are specific gods that are in power of the winds, in power of the water, in power of certain natural forces, etc. So for paganism, not exclusively, but is polytheistic. Some pagan beliefs, however, do conclude that there is a supreme god. The Germanic pagans called the superior god the All-Father. Nowadays, you do have a movement of neo-paganism. Most of the time, it is not because those people truly believe in multiple deities. However, they are fed up with the Middle Eastern religions. They are against Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. They believe that those religions do not belong in Europe. And therefore, it is somewhat of a neo-pagan, neo-nationalistic movement to return to the gods of the ancestors. However, this movement is deemed to failure because those people, as I said, don't truly believe in Thor and in Odin. They take this more as an identification, a way to return to traditionalism, if you will, prior to Christianity. So it is more a revival movement rather than a religious movement. But now, if you truly believe that there are many gods and you do believe in reincarnation, then ultimately you end up being a Hindu. Indian scientific Tanat and Ram is the most scientific religion, sir. And yet again, you can see here, even though it's just a silly little game that doesn't go into depth, it doesn't need to go into depth because the basic outlines of the religion are manifested within this little graph. And therefore, if you follow it honestly, you truly end up in the religion that you should then practice if you are holding this belief. If you hold the belief that there are many gods, you believe in reincarnation, then you become a Hindu. Of course, Hinduism is a term that has been coined by the colonizers, by the British. There is no such thing as Hinduism. There are multiple beliefs, but in a nutshell, most Hindus do believe that there are multiple deities. Sure, there is the saying as well that there is a supreme god, so similar to some pagan religions, but this supreme god then manifests in lesser deities that in turn are worshipped. So therefore, Hinduism, ultimately, if you grant that they believe in one god, fine, they are still attributing forms, shapes, avatars to the original god that can be worshipped as well, because they all stem from the same god. However, you face a risk here, of course, because if you look at those gods and goddesses, you see creatures like Kali. And now, just by the presupposition that everything comes from that one supreme god, we have to worship Kali. In Islam, we have a clear distinction, of course, those are jinns, and we wouldn't worship them. And now, let's return again to the starting point. How many gods do you believe in? This time, we take the third option, we say one. The follow-up question becomes, is God separate from the universe? If you hold a somewhat pantheistic belief or you subscribe to monism, you would answer no. Then the follow-up question becomes, can you worship idols? If you say yes, then you end up in Hinduism again, because as I said, Hinduism is polytheistic, but at the same time, there is a core belief where you just have one god. However, this one god, as I already mentioned, manifests in many deities and in many statues, i.e. idols. Therefore, if you can worship those idols, 
titles, you end up at Hinduism again. However, if you answer no, you end up in Sikhism, because Sikhism actually believes in one God. I would claim, excuse moi, that Sikhism is a blend of Hinduism and Islam. If you look into the historicity, you would see why this makes sense. Sikhism has been influenced deeply by Islam, by the Islamic Empire that was ruling over India at that given time. However, Sikhis do not believe that God and the universe are separate. They do believe that there is a supreme being yet again. However, this supreme being is absolutely everything. Everything around you is God in Sikhism. If you, however, answer that God is separate from this universe, then the follow-up question is, does God interact with the universe? If you answer no, you become a deist. The deist belief is actually very, very basic. You believe that there is a God, some sort of creative force, but that God created and then abandoned his creation. He's not interacting with his creation whatsoever. Imagine a scientist and that scientist creates an AI. He creates a virtual reality, the perfect virtual reality. It's running its own course. However, he creates that virtual reality. He puts it on a server, let's say, and he just abandons it. He does not interact with it whatsoever. He just lets it run. This is deism in a nutshell, a God that is not truly loving, a God that doesn't really care for us. Like creating an anthill and just letting those ants do their thing. If you do believe that God interacts with the universe, then the follow-up question becomes, did God become human in Jesus? Really, this is what it boils down to, because you have three Abrahamic faiths, three monotheistic faiths, and we will see which one is the true monotheistic faith. But nevertheless, let's say, let's give it the benefit of the doubt, three monotheistic faiths, and therefore Christianity, of course, plays a big role in this team, so to speak. Therefore, we have to clarify first and foremost, did God become human in Jesus? Honestly, just stop right here and ask yourself this question, because you answered all of those questions honestly, right? How many gods do you believe in? Is God separate from the universe? Etc. Etc. Now you're looking at this picture. It's asking you, did God become human in Jesus? Honestly, what do you think? If you truly believe that God became human in Jesus, that's it. Done deal. You are a Christian. Congratulations. <laughs> Your journey ends there. You do not believe in reincarnation. You do not believe that there are multiple deities. However, you do believe, after all, that God became a human in Jesus Christ. Fine, you are a Christian. If you answer this question with no, however, the follow-up question naturally becomes, is Jesus still the Messiah? If you answer this with no yet again, Jesus does not play any role within your religion, you're Jewish. Oy vey. Judaism is a monotheistic religion. However, the God in Judaism has certain human qualities, such as that he can actually manifest in a human as well and wrestle with the Jews. Moreover, he needs rest on the seventh day. So he has certain humanistic traits. Moreover, Judaism is an ethnocentric religion. We're talking about the chosen people of God. Judaism is essentially for the Jews, for the Israelites. This is the claim of Judaism that there is a specific group of people that are exalted by God. If you now believe that Jesus is the Messiah and you do not believe that God became a human, voila, you are a Muslim. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. All right. This is it for today's video. As I said, of course, you can go into depth into every single religion. There is more to Hinduism. There is more to Buddhism. There is more to atheism even. And of course, there's more to Islam as well. However, the basic outline of this graph still holds true, still holds correct. If you cannot follow through with those basic points and you already disagree with, for example, that Jesus is God incarnate, then you cannot be Christian by default no matter how much you resonate with the moral teachings of Jesus. Or if you simply don't believe that God has multiple avatars, but you resonate with Hindu music, with the chants, with the meditative practices, etc., etc., you still cannot be a Hindu. And the same applies for Buddhism. No matter how much you enjoy meditation and the moral teachings of Buddhism, if you do believe that there is a God, you cannot be a Buddhist, etc., etc., you name it. And therefore, I'm asking you, 
honestly go through this very basic graph, play along, answer those simple questions and let me know in the comment section which religion you are. If you truly, honestly don't end up at Islam, so be it. Good luck in any other religion. I'm not here to convince you. Allah guides who he wills. However, if you end up at Islam, ask yourself the question, why are you not a Muslim yet? Again, I hereby invite you to Islam. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. What does it mean to be a Muslim? Around the world today, we are seeing fellow brothers and sisters suffering. Take a look at the events in Gaza, a sorrowful sight. Innocent people being killed just for being human. Ibrahim, a fellow revert, could not tolerate the oppression of Muslims around the world, especially in the social media world. So he decided to create his own halal social media company called Dawagram. However, two months into his journey, he was arrested by local officers. Ibrahim now more than ever needs support of the Ummah to keep Dawagram up and running. Every small donation helps. FreeIbrahimX.com